Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Good morning to all of you. We welcome you as we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go unto the altar of God. God my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, I will recite the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one of the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come unto you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. I waited, waited for the Lord, who bent down and heard my cry drew me out of the pit of destruction, out of the mud of the swamp, set my feet upon rock, steadied my steps. Alleluia. And put a new song in my mouth, a hymn our God. Many shall look on in awe, and they shall trust in the Lord. Alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. Thanks you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you redeemed us through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Grant that we may benefit from the graces merited by our Savior. 
We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. On this, the second Sunday of Easter, we take the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual. Too costly in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Alleluia. Lord, I am your servant, your servant, the child of your native servant. You have loosed my bonds. Alleluia. The second reading for today is taken from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I praise you, Lord, for you raised me up and did not let mine enemies rejoice over me. Lord, you brought me up from Sheol. You kept me from going down into the pit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas called the Dimas, 
One of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief, you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. These words are taken from today's Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, following the arrest and crucifixion of Jesus, the apostles hid themselves out of fear. They locked the doors and barred the windows. I am sure that they heard every sound, waiting for that one knock that would bring about their own arrest, where they too could suffer crucifixion by the Romans. But the Lord, that Easter evening, following the resurrection, appeared to them. For whatever reason, Thomas was not present. The Lord came in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. This is how Jesus would greet them. His greeting was intended to calm their fears. It was intended to give them confidence and courage in the, in the place of terror and dread that they all must have felt. His calming words were to transform them from extreme fear to great rejoicing. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. It was his assurance to them that he indeed was with them. He would greet them again with Thomas present, which took place a week later with the same message, Peace be with you. In Luke chapter 19, verse 41, we read the following. As Jesus approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you only would have known on this day that would, which would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. Jesus 
The Prince of Peace wept over Jerusalem, the city of peace. For he saw the destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans beginning in 67 AD and culminating with the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. I am sure that Jesus also weeps over many of our cities. At this time last year, there were approximately 37,000 souls who lost their lives to the coronavirus. Now, a year later, there are close to 560,000 who have died. I am sure that so many more have wept in so many more cities over the loss of life, over the loss of homes and jobs, but I truly believe that the miracle of Easter is true today as it was 2,000 years ago. I believe that as people turn to God in prayer, seeking strength for the various crises, that Christ again comes with the simple message and a mission, peace be with you. He would add the words, as the Father has sent me, so I send you, and he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. We are all called, my brothers and sisters, in this glorious season of Easter, to go forth as his disciples, as his witnesses, to bring forth his peace and love into the various circles of our own influence, whether it be among those who are sick, the poor, the hungry, the disenfranchised, the outcast from mainline society. His message is the same for all of us as well, as well as all those for whom we will share this message among our families, our friends and our neighbors, peace be with you. You see, Jesus needs witnesses. He needs people that will carry forth this peace, this love to all we come in contact with. Did he not tell us, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. The peace is an essential part of that love. We learn from catechetical instruction that there exists a spiritual bond, a form of a marriage between Christ as the bridegroom and his church as his bride. We also learn that we as members of the church compose his body. We find this concept in Paul's letter to the Ephesians. The truth is that Christ needs us and is dependent upon us, for we are called to be his hands, his feet, his voice, and his heart. We also seek Christ, for when we call upon him in prayer as our living bread, he gives us spiritual sustenance and strength and guidance. Jesus has given forth a message and a vision to all his disciples to go forth and to share the message of hope, compassion, mercy, love, and peace. To carry out this message and this mission, he gave his church not only the wisdom, but most importantly, the power of the Holy Spirit. Did he not breathe on his disciples that evening and say unto them, Receive the Holy Spirit? Did he not also say, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavenly laden, I will give you rest. My dear brothers and sisters, this Easter season, Jesus offers to us peace in our times, peace in our personal trials, peace in our personal troubles, 
chaos and confusion when we bring him close into our hearts. Peace, as we talked about on that Palm Sunday, is the most powerful word and recalls of how the Lord comes to us this Easter season. Amid all the problems that we have, peace is not found outside of ourselves or in our society, but rather it begins within ourselves where we meet the Lord. It is the quietness of our own upper room where the doors are locked and the windows are barred where we do not have outside distractions. It is a place where we can shut off the, the confusion and the chaos of our world. It is only then that we can begin to perceive the true peace that Christ brings to us. Belief and faith is an important matter. Just as Thomas was a realist and he wanted to see the nail print in Jesus' hands and he wanted to prove to himself by putting his hand into Jesus' side, our Lord calls us forth. He shows us his hands, he shows us his side, and he says, be not unbelieving but rather believing. When we truly come to believe like Thomas, and we come to know the risen Lord as our Lord and our God, that is how we make him alive in our lives. It is then that we can find the solace in resting with the Good Shepherd of our souls and find strength and assurance. This statement of faith my brothers and sisters, in closing, is confirmed in the words of the first letter of St. Peter, chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, in which Peter writes, Though you have not seen him, you love him. And although you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with unutterable feelings and exalted joy as the outcome of your faith, you obtain the very salvation of your souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, I will present my thank offering to you, for you have delivered me from death and my feet from stumbling. 
that I may walk before God in the light of life. Alleluia. and sisters that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord our God, accept the offerings of your rejoicing church, which you have enlivened this day and grant us the gift of perpetual gladness, for you have given us cause for great joy through your peace. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, especially at this time when he became our Paschal sacrifice, he is the true Lamb who took away the sins of the world. Through his death he conquered death for us. And by his wondrous resurrection, he restored eternal life to us. Therefore, we he join with the voices of the angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating very humbly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Zanana in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Zanana in the highest.
most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. And all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, who offer up to you the sacrifice and praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people, through Christ our Lord, amen. O God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and to make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and become for us, the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, 
a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we, who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and sleep in peace. To these souls, the Lord and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope into the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts are always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother to God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter, Paul, also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day. Supported by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. may the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us, who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not to be cause for my judgment or condemnation, though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your will, May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father, 
with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Sacrifice has been offered. Alleluia. 
Alleluia. Alleluia. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you. Most Holy Trinity, grant that the sacrifice which I, the unworthy, have offered into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and all those for whom I have offered it through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him he empowered to become children of God, these are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Dear brothers and sisters, I thank you for coming and sharing with us today as we celebrate this, the second Sunday of Easter. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be among all of us, and may he bless all for whom we will remember in prayer at this time. We will also offer prayers for re the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed loved ones. May God be with you, and may God grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of our faithful departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 